Hello the Darkness 344 here, and in today's video I'll be basically showing off uh, this uh, simple RAM cell design and I'll probably make a follow up video with a full in depth tutorial on how to make one of these. So uh, before we get started, this is a 4-bit a a RAM design and memory design I guess, I don't, I don't really know, and it's, uh, it's vertical. So. A lot of my horizontal designs um, are not very compact, where this one is a whole lot more compact than most vertical designs, and is um, faster as well. So that that's basically why vertical components are pretty good because they're just normally quite fast. So this is of course um, two wide tileable, over it does look a bit weird, and that's because um, it uses this um, alternating. Um, way like this alternating cells so one's lower than the other and this is just to fit in that too wide um, tileable well it's, it's not really too wide tileable it's um, four wide tileable but um, you have um, an output every two blocks basically which is quite useful so you only have a one block gap between outputs of the cells so of course um, these two blocks are one cell, and these two blocks are a different cell. So like we can input um, this number into this cell, and let's input a different number into the next cell. And of course we can just read the cells like this. I, don't, I haven't actually um, put any control circuitry on this yet, though I'll probably do that in the tutorial. So as I've already said, this design is inspired the, by the OR server. So definitely go check that out if you're on Java Edition, very good. And uh, the very the, the way the cell works is it, it uses comparators. So I, I basically came up with this design while just playing around with comparators, and it's it's quite a simple design actually. Um, we basically use comparators on subtract mode, invert mode. Uh, I think it's called subtract mode, and we can power them with blocks or you could use barrels as I've seen people use however we're just going to use redstone blocks like this then we can have repeaters in like this Oops. and these outputs we can of course turn on and off like this so this is quite useful um, because we can put another comparator here on subtract mode and then we can so if we just get rid of this for now we can enable and disable this output so normally when you're doing this you'd actually just use a comparator then a repeater like this to do this so say we had a one coming in we can enable and disable it however that means the circuit is three wide and to fit it in our well two wide uh, per cell uh, limit what we can do instead is instead of using this repeater um, well, we, if, if we used this repeater, we could have a redstone block here, and this would be the next cell, as you can see. And this repeater gets powered. However, when we want to turn this repeater off, or to unlock this comparator, we can't really do that, because we can't use repeater locking. So instead, we can use a, another comparator on subtract mode, and that works quite well, and it fits within our two block limit. So then what we can do is we, this is just the control circuitry, we actually need to, well, if it's the, the read circuitry basically, telling it if it's allowed to go out or not. So now we need to do the memory cell, and the way we can do this is use repeater locking. So of course that's um, where we have our input like this, we can basically lock the repeater. So if I lock it on a zero, no matter what the input is, the output will stay at zero. And if we input a 1, then lock it, no matter what the input is, the output will stay a 1. So this is quite useful, but um, of course that's three blocks because of a repeater. However, I found out that you can actually use a redstone comparator to um, lock this repeater. So as you can see, it locks the repeater. But then of course we can do the same thing we've done here, stick a repeater into this comparator, and then we can of course disable it and enable it. 
So then we combine it with this original circuit. Let's just get rid of this for now. And just like that, we have an input. We have write, like this. And we have a read, and we have an output. And then, of course, we have to have these redstone blocks here. And this is all within two blocks. Of course, we have these redstone blocks, but um, that's because the, the next cell will have these redstone blocks because we have this alternating fashion, well, pattern, where the next cell would actually be one higher. So um, we can just build it like this. And as you can see, this, this would be the next cell. Like that. Here we go. So we have one cell here and another cell here. And of course this would alternate. And of course this allows it to be quite stackable. As we can see over here, the cells are alternating. And that it's, it's just quite compact, a lot more compact than some of my previous designs. So the real reason you'd use this is not really for a large data storage, it's, it's more for just um, quick data access because um, it only takes one tick to write to it. So as we can see, we can write every tick. Um, of course, uh, you, you have the extra time from any of the delay. So one redstone tick, two redstone ticks, three redstone ticks. Um, so it'll take three redstone ticks from this input over here. However, um, you can send in a command every one redstone tick for it to write, and, that, and that's the same with reading. It takes one, two, three, and four redstone ticks to actually output. However, you can send in a read command every redstone tick, as we can see, and it will read that fast. So of course we can like put in a pulse generator and even send in just one tick like this actually I think this will work um, we might have to have a repeat here there we go and as you can see we have a pulse generator generating only one rest and tick and we get an output which is only one tick long so some cells you'd need to provide maybe a two tick um, input to the read command but this one you can do with one so if if you were going to use a mass data storage you wouldn't really use a memory cell like this you'd use um, say comparators maybe because then you have um, values um, 0 to 15 or you might even use um, one like this I, I think I showed this off in one of my previous videos where we have um, serial memory and well this block of serial memory over here um, we have um, eight so that's one byte and then times that by eight so we have eight bytes times eight cells which means this block over here can store 64 bytes so yeah where this one would be used for more like say mass storage um, it's relatively slow and that's why you'd use this as for like say a smaller storage but um, it's a lot faster, so you could use it as RAM or maybe even cache. Um, so yeah, this this one is 64 bytes. Uh, this one is only 8 bytes. Of course, you can expand it quite easily. But this one is quite a lot faster than that one. So even though it's less storage for a similar volume, it's quite a lot faster. So it's still quite useful. So over here, I've made a quick test setup basically so we can actually test the um well the 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 ability to write to each cell in only one redstone tick so uh, we're gonna write to eight different cells so we're gonna write to this cell 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 and this cell i think it was eight it might be seven one two three four five six seven eight so it is eight cells we're going to be writing to eight cells uh basically in 0 0.8 seconds if we don't uh, account for any of the latency but so we, we have the data over here so the first cell will be one 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 second cell will be um zero 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 one third cell will be zero zero one zero fourth cell will be zero one zero zero 
first cell will be 1, 0, 0, 0. And then it'll be 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Then 1, 0, 1, 0. This, this is just a complete random pattern I just put in. And so we'll be able to see it. Uh, it'll write to all these cells very quickly with only a tick between each write. So you can see here, this is the control circuitry. There's only one rest and tick between each um, write. And then, of course, um, this uh, we're passing the data in uh, with this serial encoder, pretty much just encoding the data into serial. So, and we're writing really quick. So, first of all, let's just clean the cells. So, I can just activate this. And we're just writing a zero to each of these cells because we have nothing being passed in. And when we read them, of course, we just get zero. And uh, now we can actually test these cells by just flicking this lever here. As you can see, all the data gets passed in very quickly. And as you can see, we have our data output in all the cells in perfect order. So of course, um, you can of course just customize this to whatever you want and or, or like the, the data here to whatever you want. It's, it's just quite a quick way of testing the throughput of these cells. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then the only last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is um, if you want to store a massive amount of data, these cells really aren't the best way to do it because while they're extremely fast, or at least you can write to them really fast and you can also read to them really fast, or at least you'll, you'll be able to write, I mean, read to them every one rest and tick as well, read a different cell every one rest and tick uh, with just a tiny bit of latency. So one, two, three, four rest and ticks of latency without accounting for any like additional repeaters. So that's pretty good um, read latency and pretty good write latency. Um, it could of course be a bit faster, but that would also make the design a bit less compact. And um, in reality, since this is so compact, um, you can also, f the, the latency is just quite small anyway, because of that reason. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and there will most likely be a tutorial on this coming up so yeah look look forward to that please like and subscribe and i'm out